Hey guys, this is Marcus from M Factor, and today we're going to be making storm glasses. Storm glasses are really awesome. It's kind of like having your own personal snowstorm, but in a bottle. They're invented by Robert Fitzroy and used as 1800s era nautical weather prediction devices. While there's no actual evidence to suggest that they can accurately predict the weather, they are highly sensitive to changes in temperature and great examples of how temperature relates to solubility. Nighthawk in Light has a great storm glass tutorial over on his channel that you should definitely check out. And today we're going to be reviewing his method. So first things first, we're going to need a scale, some potassium nitrate, some ammonium chloride, camphor, 100 proof vodka, and some glass containers. Long story short, we got three solid chemicals dissolved in a solvent. As for the three solid chemicals, we have the ammonium chloride that I ordered from a company called Alpha Chemicals. We have the potassium nitrate that I got out of some bottles of stump remover. And we have an interesting one called camphor. Camphor is meant to keep bugs out of your house and it's also thrown into some toolboxes because it sublimates, forms a waxy covering over your tools and prevents rusting. In order to work properly, your solvent will need to be half water and half ethanol. And that's exactly what 100 proof means, 50% water and 50% ethyl alcohol. You'll likely have to go to a liquor store for this in that most grocery stores don't carry it. 80 proof is much more common, but it's only 40% alcohol and won't do the job. Vodka can be on the expensive side, but it doesn't need to be fancy, just buy the cheapest brand you can find. Save yourself some time and just go with the 100 proof vodka. I have tried isopropyl rubbing alcohol, but that didn't work, and I even tried to get away with laboratory grade ethanol, but that was a dud also. As for our containers, these are Voss water bottles. It's this fancy brand of quote-unquote artisan water. I don't care about all that noise, the tap is good enough for me. What I do care about is that they're cheap and they give the project a nice finished professional look. The labels are painted on, but if you use a razor blade, you can scratch them off pretty quick. So, we're ready to make our storm glasses, but this is where we're going to differ from Nighthawk in Light's method a little bit. In his video, he mixes and heats his chemicals in their final glasses, and that's how I usually do it too. However, the last time I did that, a big bubble rose up from the bottom of the glass, knocked off the lid, and shot a cloud of alcohol mist into the air. Naturally, that cloud came into contact with the oven burner. Now, think real hard. What happens when alcohol mist touches fire? pretty intense. Ironically, my buddy asked me only seconds before, how likely is this project to blow up? And I said 50-50. Not even I knew how right I was. You can increase or decrease the size of the batch depending on the size of your containers, but to keep things simple, for every 300 milliliters of vodka, we're going to use one of these tablet packs of camphor, 10 grams of potassium nitrate, and 10 grams of ammonium chloride. I'm going to be making three separate storm glasses as Christmas presents. The combined volume of those three containers is about 1,200 milliliters or 1.2 liters. That means we're going to be making a quadruple batch. We need 40 grams of potassium nitrate, 40 grams of ammonium chloride, four tablet packs of camphor, which smells delicious by the way, it's like a minty menthol smell, 1.2 liters of vodka. Mix your chemicals, then turn on low heat and cover them. The point of the ice cubes is to distill any alcohol that tries to evaporate. You probably won't need a pot this large, but I chose this one because it had a nice pouring lip. Let this setup sit for a few minutes and check periodically. When all of the chemicals have dissolved, then we're ready to move on. Once all the chemicals are dissolved, turn off the heat and pour the solution into its individual containers. Let the containers sit to cool completely before sealing them, and remember to keep something cold on top to distill any alcohol that tries to evaporate. Once the storm glasses are cool, you can seal them tight. This is what the finished product should look like, and actually, if you look closely, there are already some small crystals that are formed and suspended in the liquid. As I mentioned earlier, they're sensitive to temperature change. 
But that being said, if you live in a temperature controlled house and you set your storm glass on the dining room table, you're not going to see much action. If you want to see truly spectacular crystal formations, outside or next to your window is your best bet. I keep mine in my window and they do fantastically well. Stick around to the end and I'll throw in some pictures of crystal formations that I've seen. Also, check out the video description for instructions on how the storm glasses used to be read to predict weather. Lastly, if this all sounds like too much work to you, then let me know in the comments. I've been considering making these to order for some time, and I'll probably decide whether or not to move forward with that based on how much interest you guys express in the comments. So let me know. If you like what you see, show me some love, hit that like button, and subscribe. Peace out, guys. Thank you.